for our special segment, Alpha Managers, and joining in now to discuss his strategies, stock bets, and of course, what investors should do in turbulent times like this. S. Nareen, the CIO of ICICI Prudential Asset Management, joins in. Hi, Nareen. Good to see you in. We need the calming voices at a time when the market is so turbulent. Uh, you know, what is the strategy that long-term retail investors should adopt now? Because for the last, say, 6 to 12 months, uh, the only strategy that has been advocated is, you know, invest into mutual funds in a staggered manner. Uh, now, when you see a lot of global volatility, do you recommend sitting on cash or do you think that one should continue doing what they did up until now? See, over the last uh, one, uh, six months to one year, we've been recommending investors to both invest in fixed income and uh, invest in uh, hybrid strategies like the balance strategies. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, uh, now given the way the markets have shaped up, uh, it is possibly uh, something we are worth considering investing more aggressively uh, by looking at uh, pure equity strategies on a lump sum basis also, uh, instead of only on uh, systematic investment plans or systematic transfer plans. The reason being is that uh, in our uh, framework of investing, we like people to invest uh, lump sum when uh, there is fear. It looks like uh, you've started to take uh, some more bets in the metal sector and you're a, a bit negative on pharma. Uh, if, if, if you could uh, first tell us if that is right and uh, uh, what would your reasons be for these positions? See, it's actually very simple. If you look at a sector, uh, you know, the best time to invest is when there is blood on the street. And uh, this is something which has worked for the last 50, 60 years. If you look and see which is the sector where there is blood on the street, it is metal sector. Uh, I think uh, most of the companies are loss making and uh, there is a possibility of huge uh, bad debts if the current situation happens to some of the weaker metal players. And uh, in my career in investing, I've seen that if you invest when there is blood in the street in a sector, whether, whether it be textile, whether it be sugar, whether it be metals, uh, whether it be banks, I think the op there is very good potential for long-term investing in that sector. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, you know, just coming back to the point you made about not expecting too much by way of returns in this market, what kind of realistic returns can one expect for the next, say, 6 to 12 months? Uh, given that, you know, if this China situation gets worse, then uh, the global liquidity could be crimped down. Uh, for India particularly, what uh, returns can one expect? Actually, you know, I can give you a number and uh, it is very easy to give a number of 10 to 15 percent uh, or 10 to 20 percent. The fact is no one goes right in these numbers. Show me a person who expected uh, 8,000, sub 8,000 nifty in August at the beginning of July or something like that. So I think no one gets right on numbers. Having said that, I think... Uh, I think we get too worried about global events. Uh, as you know, we've seen uh, Italy, we've seen Spain, we've seen Greece, we've seen Ukraine at one point of time, Dubai. So periodically you will have global problems and uh, the, the time to invest uh, lump sum in equity would be during global problems. If everything was smooth, uh, you would have huge FII buying and maybe not the time to invest in a very aggressive manner. So I would say that uh, it's good for the Indian investors that you have these periodic global problems to give people opportunities to invest, considering that at this point of time, if you see mutual fund uh, equities is around uh, 50 to $60 billion, whereas FIS is about $330 billion. So I think uh, these periodic corrections which come due to global reasons is an opportunity for uh, Indian investors to increase their position, otherwise, you know, bulk of our market is now foreign owned. Your, your top holding in two funds is par grade. I, I know you, you would not want to talk stock specific, but, uh, uh, you know, for, for a lot of fund managers, government company and that too in par sector would be a strict no-no. Uh, what makes you so bullish on this space if you don't want to talk about individual company? See, it's simple. I think, uh, you know, if you look at the entire uh, return expectation that we had uh, since the beginning of the year, 
it was never uh, what uh, the market gave in 2013-14. Uh, it was lower than that, and therefore uh, regulated utility with uh, a very clear outlook till 2019. Uh, makes the stock very uh, relatively safe because it's a regulated utility where the returns are uh, fixed as per uh, CRC rules. So, and uh, from an investing point of view, uh, I think today PSUs are certainly one of the more interesting areas to invest in, given that over the last 5 to 10 years, hardly any money has been made in PSUs. So many of those sectors have act many of those stocks have got derated. They have become very cheap, and uh, the good thing actually many of these PSUs have is they are very strong balance sheets. And uh, actually, if you look at uh, what can happen to the economy in the next three to five years, I would say that it is the PSUs who have the balance sheet to implement new projects and grow. Whereas uh, if you see the private sector and many of the infrastructure related play, players, they are actually having stretched balance sheets and consequently not in a position to expand. So I actually think PSUs in the infrastructure space uh, which have good balance sheets have one of the best outlooks for the next three to five years. You are getting them cheap, uh, the valuations are very cheap and the outlook seems to be reasonable with a three to five year view. So, which is how we are looking at it, and uh, these are now, and uh, it is it's only the PSUs who have the ability to implement a capex cycle at this point of time. I think the market also recognizes it slowly. Okay, that's an interesting take on PSUs. Uh, we'll come to the PSU banks in a bit, but before that, I also noticed that you've increased recently increased your exposure in the auto sector, and one of your top holdings that you have in the uh, dynamic plan is Tata Motors. Uh, that is one stock that has you know shocked the street with its derating. Uh, what do you do at a time like this? Do you keep the faith and hold on to these? companies because of the pedigree of the management or um, you know do you start to perhaps trim your positions here see in the dynamic plan uh, we've always uh, pursued a counter cyclical strategy uh, to look at sectors in trouble uh, where the long term outlook is uh, very good and the valuations are very attractive and uh, that is a strategy we have followed uh, over a long period of time as part of the process. So we are always on the lookout for uh, areas where we think the long term outlook is very good and uh, where the current valuation is very reasonable. And uh, we keep looking at stocks and sectors uh, for investment in this manner. Uh, our experience over a long period of time has been that such a framework is conducive for long term investing and uh, if you see most of the global uh, investment gurus, they recommend investing counter cyclically in a value framework for long term investment returns. And uh, today is one such opportunity where uh, you have wide uh, divergence in valuations and uh, you have some sectors which are very, very cheap and some stocks which are very, very cheap and uh, whose long term outlook continues to be very good with uh, doubtful short term outlook and uh, we believe that such an approach should actually lend itself to very good long term investing. There are always risks in the short run and they will continue to be there. Okay, that point is taken. Uh, Naren, uh, one space where uh, you know investors have made a lot of money is the uh, oil and gas sector, uh, at least in some stocks like the the, uh, the HPCLs and BPCLs of the world, the oil marketing companies. Uh, it looks like uh, you have decided to book profit in this space because in your latest holdings, that is not part of your top holdings. But do you think the most of the, the crude story is now priced in some of these stocks. See, our view on the oil marketing space has been that uh, essentially they are uh, regulated uh, entities whose uh, profits are likely to be more uh, like a regulated return company. So when the when a sector like this is very cheap, it makes sense to actually invest in it. And uh, while the, if the sector does become costly, I think uh, then we actually see whether it makes sense to 
hold on or we see other regulated return stocks trading much cheaper where we can actually invest in. That has been our investing framework and uh, for I think for the market to believe that uh, every drop in oil leads to an increase in margins of the oil marketing companies is not uh, logical. So we don't think, uh, we do agree that over the last uh, few years the entire problems of the oil marketing companies have been resolved and uh, with uh, diesel and petrol pricing being freed uh, we have a reasonably interesting regulatory framework Having said that, I don't think the profits in that industry are inversely correlated to crude as the market seems to think it is and uh, that's where the difference between us and the market in that sector exists.